A house has to be good also for the singer, because if you don't feel that the voice is going, then it's very difficult to sing. So I, I was very, very pleasantly surprised, and uh, I heard it was wonderful acoustic, and I find it very good. Perhaps the first act of Valkyrie, for me, is the highlight of the whole ring. Having tremendous uh, pages and tremendous hours of great music. Wagner created these two characters, very special characters, uh, Sieglinde and Sigmund. He created these two characters to, to make uh, Siegfried after. Mm. But I believe the strength of uh, Zygmunt. I will be very happy if he keeps Zygmunt all the way through, you know, in the, in the whole ring, rather than creating the, um, Siegfried. You should be very proud of this theater, and you should be very proud of Casper as the general director. I mean, somebody so young, but with so much, so much experience already, and so much energy. In uh, Casper's version of this opera, the female is presented as being very strong. Is that your <coughs> impression of women in general? My impression of women in general? <laughs> <laughs> well, I... Uh, my impression that I am a totally feminist. I believe that women can do anything as well as men. And I, if, if somebody is able and capable of doing it, it has all my admiration, you know. I mean, I, I don't think there's any limitation. And I think, in fact, the strength of the ring, in a way, is in the women. special point that what Siegmund and Sieglinde does in the second act, the choices they make, that he does not go to Valhalla, does he not take the big career, but wants to stay with Sieglinde, is the legacy that is passed on to Brynhilde and that makes her take, make her choices later on in the mm -hmm. ring. So Siegmund and Sieglinde is a very important starting point. The first point in the ring where we experience true love and yeah. the choices that, that lead to some other choices later on in the ring. The fact of being one of the most suffering characters that exist in the repertoire is very touching. <laughs>
for me it is a miracle that I'm still singing. I don't, uh, I, every day that passes is a blessing. I don't know, I say it well. I don't know about next week. I don't know about uh, next month. So when I promised Casper uh, that I was going to come to sing, I have to say, yes, I accept it, I said, but I don't know if I will be singing by that time. Anything that I'm planning now, it has to be always with a question mark, if I will be singing or no. Og her skulle det have været slut, men mod alle odds vendte Domingo tilbage til bordet og vores tv-kamera og tog en lille snak med sin vært, Kasper Bæk Holten. So Placido, it's such a pleasure to have you here in Copenhagen. Finally, it's great to be from. I wanted to ask you now that you're here, what what do you th- what is the special thing about tenors? Why is why is there such a fascination with with tenors? Is there anything special about tenors? <laughs> Isn't there? <that? laughs> I just don't know. I think I probably what I what I said. Somebody asked me, you know, once said, well, why why three tenors? Yeah. You so I mean, so after all, the tenor voice is not the most virile voice, you know, so the baritone has a more real mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. voice and the bass even lower. I believe that the, what happened with the tenor, it must be the danger. <laughs> you know, it must be the, the danger, it's the excitement, yeah, the excitement yeah, yeah. of the danger of the high notes, you know, if you are going to, to reach the high note or no. Yeah. I grew up being a kind of a almost baritone, mm. and I have to fight every day of my life just to get my tessitures. But I think that what is, it must be fascinating, first of all, the, the tenor parts that are always, most of the time, is the is the, is the person hero, in love or is the, the hero, hero yeah, yeah. Is, the, is the lover, is the whatever. And to, but secondly, I, I believe it's the danger. You yeah. know, the, the public kind of goes to the theater The hoping that then you are going to to hit that particular note and so on. I actually enjoy that about opera because it's it's like opera is of course art, art and you want to tell a story and show characters but it's also that excitement of almost a sports event you know how is yeah. it going to go the, the the danger of live arts but what's it like to live with that on stage I mean to every of your career to think is it going to be there tonight I mean well it's yes it's been for you but I, of course but what's it like to live with that danger I never remember one day in my whole life that I wouldn't feel nervous, you know, about mm. going on the stage. Mm. Yes, it's, it's a certain, it's the responsibility, yeah. and it's the, it's the fact. And uh, then the voice is, is, is an instrument that lives with you. And yeah, to wake up every morning, I always yeah. think that must be so amazing, yeah. to wake up and not know if the instrument is, is working or... The instrument lives with you, and the instrument is affected by everything. Yeah. 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 By... by by happiness, by your happiness, mm. by what you are eating, by the weather. So mm. it, it is really, it is really amazing. Mm. Well, it is, um, that is the fragility, mm. the fragility of an instrument that lives with mm. you, you know, mm. and we have to take care of it. I am so amazed that you're not only having this career, you're also director of two opera houses. I think it's a lot of work to be director of one opera house. Yeah. But I mean, also as, a, as an opera director, you, you, must, you must be looking for the fresh young tenor voices. What do you look for in a tenor? Because sometimes I think when I look for the young tenors, it's so difficult to tell exactly what potential you are listening for and when to put in what part. Not to push it too far, but on the other hand, you are so desperate to get the yeah. right tenor. And it's a big risk to put people in too heavy roles too soon. Sure. Or what, sure. what are you looking for when you listen to young tenors well, when, you, when you cast them? First of all, I, uh, I look for the beautiful sound. Hmm. Then, of course, there are different characteristics and there is according to the repertoire that they might be able to sing, or the repertoire that you are looking for, yeah. you know. So I think that um, the, it's, it's rare, you know, the, yeah. the, 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 the tenor voice is a rare one. When you move into the Wagnerfach and do well, Siegmund and Parsifal and Lundgren, and how has that felt? Is it a different way of using the voice? Are you, is that changing the voice? How has that yeah, felt the, for the, you? The, 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 the repertoire you need. Mm. You need a more coloring and in the voice. It goes, you know, the Zygmunt is, is, is a part and is more close to 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 Otello than mm. to Bohem. No? Mm. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, sure. You know, but I across my career I was able to to color it with the voice. I yeah. don't believe people say that you sing only with 
with one voice. I think it is a palette of yeah. colors. It's yeah. just like a painter. Yeah. Singing, you should be able to, to combine the colors and to, to do it accordingly. And so I, I, I have been able to do from, from very light repertoire mm. to the dramat dramatic, dramatic and the yeah. held in tenor. So, yeah. but, uh, I think it needs the... But do you need a different vocal technique than when you work with Wagner, or is it basically the same? I think basically you know. for Wagner you need all you need a, a voice that will carry, you know, mm, so for that, the orchestration yeah, of Wagner, yeah, yeah. you know, for the tessiture and yeah. and, and the, the orchestration, the Wagnerian orchestration. Mm. Mm. Being on stage is something personal, and even if you're doing what I ask you to, mm -hmm. and, and, and you're very loyal, and you said in the press conference you're a good soldier, and that's absolutely right, because you really are, and you do what I ask you, mm -hmm. but still you do it with personality on stage. And that combination of bringing music and drama together and making it one have always, for me, been the most important thing about opera and why I always adored what you did. Thank you, Casper. Is, is that just something that comes natural, or is it, is it something that, that's a choice that you are so interested also in, in making drama and music work together? What? I think all my life I have, I have, I have been doing it. Yeah. And of course you can improve with the years and you can, but there is no way that you can portray these characters without really believing no. and without being really feeling yeah. the acting part. Yeah, no. I'm preparing right now for a production of Traviata next, next mm -hmm. season and I'm listening all the time. My, the only recording for me of Traviata is the one with you and Kleiber and wow. it's, and for me really listening to that it, it, it gives me so much inspiration mm. oh it's that voice I've listened to so many times it's a fantastic oh. having you here Pastor. it's really a pleasure it's really a pleasure and Thanks I, that I, I hope that uh, then we will make music together I'm sure in many we occasions I'm and sure. I I knew it when we meet for the Goya then we have to meet again so now after the Valkyrie we have to find I know the next we time have to, to find the next time Allerede den 30. juli vender Domingo tilbage til Danmark til Esbjerg, hvor han ligesom dengang i parken vil give koncert sammen med Inga Nielsen. Oh, 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 oh.